Hello, hello. Welcome back everybody to the pretty thick lifestyle welcome back to the channel welcome back to the podcast this is extremely exciting before we go any further please remember to subscribe to the podcast remember to subscribe to the channel remember to, to like and to share the video and comment down below with anything that you would like to say anything that you would like me to talk about anything that you would like me to cover so in this episode you are getting to know me, your host, you are getting a deep dive into Pretty Thick. Um, but not only that, this will give you so much insight as to what it's like growing up as a big girl, navigating through life and the challenges that come with not only being a woman, but being a big woman. This is also for that young girl who is still coming into herself. So stay tuned, listen out. Some of the answers will really help you. But I am not alone. I have a beautiful co-host, my lovely sister, Rory. Rory, introduce yourself, beautiful. <laughs> Hello, Rosie, and thank you. Uh, my name is Rory Sangtwani, and I am Rosie's little sister and co-host, like she said, and I'm so excited to be doing this with you. Aww, <laughs> thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. I think it's so important that we create a community and create a sisterhood, yeah, you know, of true. supporting each other because we're in a world where you know women we're so fragile right and sure. we need each other you and know. so that's what we're trying to do with pretty thick so if you have a sister or someone that you know who needs sisterhood share some sisterhood you'll see it's it's so much better together it's so much better it's so much better yeah. together so I put out a request or I put out a post rather asking you guys to send me questions that you would like to know about me and you know about pretty thick and about miss rose personally so rory is here to help me like i said so she's mm -hmm. gonna ask the question and then i will answer and then uh yeah we'll take it from there so you're gonna learn a lot so don't worry you're not gonna get <laughs> bored i promise yeah shall we get started let's get right to it let's do it so the first question who is pretty thick and how did this come this whole concept come about so okay pretty thick is actually she's my alter ego she's yes. my sasha fierce mm -hmm. <laughs> so i discovered her about two years ago mm -hmm. um so it gives you an idea of how long i've struggled with body confidence yeah um it took me forever to come into my body i struggled with body confidence for most of my years yeah and i eventually became comfortable in my own skin and i decided to just I just start, decided to take a chance and said, you know what, um, maybe I am beautiful this way, you yeah. know, maybe I was created this way for a specific reason and, you know, it's actually coming to life now, you yeah. know, and so I just embraced it and uh, I just love the name Pretty Thick because it just sounds so, pretty. it sounds clean, but it's also like, you know, because, you know, yeah. you know, you're pretty and then you're thick. Yeah. So I just thought to just combine them. Because I feel like it's very, it's like two opposing statements exactly. pretty thick nobody really puts the two exactly. together you know so exactly yeah yeah so that's how she came about amazing style. yeah <laughs> second question what led you to become confident in the body that you have and just love yourself the way you are so like i said you know struggling with body confidence for most of my years it took a trip um overseas yeah. i decided to up here very late in my life <laughs> as a late bloomer right okay. <laughs> um i decided to up here and when i was that side i think the level of acceptance was very overwhelming mm. and the plus size market is so big over there you know i bought my first bikini when i was over there i bought my first you know pair of short shorts <laughs> while i was over there and you know the way people were so accepting was it was like i said it was overwhelming and yeah. i thought oh wow um, maybe i am beautiful you know maybe i am supposed to look this way because let me tell you for years i was obsessed 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 with losing weight mm. trying to look a certain way and it nearly killed me yeah not just mentally but physically and physically because of all the pills that i took i drank all kinds of magic pills and magic teas and magic waters and potions trying to look a certain way and mentally because of the depression that i was in and i didn't even know it um i you know i was in a deep dark hole uh, because I was so unhappy with how I looked hated looking at myself in the mirror the only thing I loved was my smile but I also hated the fact that my smile is on my body 
Sure. So I, I had to come out of that and, you know, and being accepted like that actually did open, you know, my eyes to myself. Mm. And I always say to parents or sisters or families or colleagues or whoever who has people in their circle that are a little bit big, that a little acceptance goes a long way. Um, we don't know why people look the way they do. Sometimes we don't know the reason why a person is a little overweight or a little chunky. Sure. There's a lot of reasons behind it. So I think it was actually the acceptance that, um, you know, and my self-acceptance more than anything. Then once I accepted myself, I just kind of embraced my body and I've just been living in my truth ever since. That's deep. I really, really felt that. Like, yeah. wow, hey? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Third question. How do you deal with the guilt and insecurities that are imposed on you as a black child from your parents? Okay, so let me let me start by saying this. Parents don't intend to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Not always anyway, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, they don't intend to hurt your feelings. They don't inten intend to belittle you or to demean you. I feel like um, parents just have not known how to communicate sure. with their kids that are looking different or feeling different and vice versa. For the longest time, you know, me and my mom, my mom is amazing, right? Yeah. And my mom is the most petite moms in the history of moms with the flattest stomach, you know, and just a small chest, you know, so she's never really had the experience of saying oh okay i'm kind of chunky now how do i get out of this but that's just always been her body and me i've never been petite like never and she just did not know how to communicate with me and i also didn't know how to tell her that sometimes the things that she says hurt my feelings until i realized that you know what she's not trying to hurt my feelings she just doesn't know how to talk to me we would go into a store and you know i would make a comment and say oh you know what that's a nice jean and you know the first thing she would say would be oh but i don't think that comes in your size yeah. And, you know, for a long time, I was like, why would she say that? And sometimes I'm just saying that the gene is nice. And and I'm saying this to protect my mother. My mother's going to listen to this, right? So yeah. I'm not, like I said, she, there was no intention to hurt, to hurt me. You, yeah. um, she just w almost was protecting me in a way. Yeah. But because I hadn't communicated to her to say, actually, this actually I kind of don't like it. Yeah. And I had to have that sit down with her to say, um, you know, this is kind of who I am and this is kind of how I am I've tried to lose weight I've mm. tried to look a certain way but I realized that I cannot you know for my health for my sanity and so you just I think how you deal with those things come to accept yourself and once you accept yourself you know remember that you are beautiful the way you are you yeah. were created the way you are for a specific reason and then, you know, find a way to communicate with your parents, your family or your friends, whoever it is that is, you know, kind of fueling these insecurities to just say, listen, this is me and this is who I am. But you have to first be OK with you before you can make other people be OK with you. Yeah, I'm uh, on that point as well. I feel like it's very hard for people to understand what they've never been exactly so you know like you say your mom was very petite mm -hmm. so she wouldn't really understand exactly what the so she wouldn't know how to relate to me you understand yeah. so i think it's very important just yeah. to accept you and do you before exactly yeah and then communicate and then communicate and then communicate i think we've seen a lot of women and not just in in you know looking a certain way or whatever but a lot of things we don't communicate we don't Just express ourselves and we I keep inside, it in there yeah. and it eats you up mm -hmm. and you end up living years and years just, just winging it and yeah. it's just a pain yeah 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 sure okay fourth question how does one deal with pressure from family to become something that they really are not uh, you know, this ties into the, you know, my answer from the previous question that you need to be okay with you. Mm. Once you know what you want, you can make people understand that. And a lot of the time, my mother wanted me to be a doctor so badly, <laughs> so badly. And but she didn't know that me and mathematics not friends we broke up <laughs> like in grade nine we went our separate ways yeah. and that was it yeah and i tried i tried i tried i tried so so hard and i realized that the pressure 
I was creating the pressure by not communicating and I was creating the pressure by not knowing um, what I what it is that I really really wanted so I think the way to deal with pressure is to you know be be aware of yourself mm. and be aware of what you want because mm. then you can communicate it to yeah. people and make them understand that you know what I, I don't really want to be a doctor yeah I'm a fantastic actress I, I sing like a boss <laughs> do you understand yeah. and then you know you once you come to them with that confidence you're able to you know to come out of that pressure because we end up creating that pressure ourselves mm. by not saying anything and I realized that I mean I went as far as I went and I wrote even an exam at the University of KwaZulu Natal my mom and I mm. rode a bus and um, sure. I went to go write the exam what was I writing do you even know? I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. Oh. But just because of the pressure. And I realized that had I just told her, we could have saved ourselves a trip. A whole trip. I need for the exam. You know, all kinds yeah. of things. So have a plan. Come into your truth. And then you communicate that. Yeah. yeah. Just own it. Absolutely. Own, own what you want to do. Yes. And just take charge. Yes. Because it's your life at the end of the day. You know. So that's why I say that the pressure sometimes is created by us by Ourselves. not being true to so, who yeah. we are so it takes us way too long to tell our parents i don't want to be a doctor or i don't want to be a lawyer um it takes it takes us too long for that and all that time you're living in pressure that they don't even know that they created true. you created the pressure for yourself and truth of the matter is you'll never please everyone no, no one is ever going to be accepting of the life you chose okay ever. so hey never going to be able to please everyone all right, moving on to the next question. What do you feel, or rather, how do you feel about being called Stula? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is not my name. That is not my mm -hmm. name, and I do not answer to it. Yeah. I think what we always forget or take for granted is that one of the most common form of bullying comes in the form of name calling. Mm. And you must remember that if... I, as I say that, keep in mind that I'm not talking about the names that you call people when you're fighting. I'm talking about the names that you call people that you think are funny. Yeah. Or that you think are, are just that. You know, if you see somebody in the office. And it's not just about, you must remember that name calling is not just for, for plus size or big women. Yeah. you calling somebody skinny. They don't like that. Mm, you sure. calling somebody thunder thighs. They are not comfortable with that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Calling people four eyes, calling people. There's all kinds of mm. names. So I think a lot of the time, because of the names are used in, in a negative kind of way. So they kind of impact you and they kind of start to shape you. But that's because you're answering to names that are not yours. Yeah. You know, mm. your name is Rose. Like, no, mm. my name is Rose. So if and somebody is it. calling me Stula, they're not talking to me. When mm. they say Rose, they're talking to me. Today, when they say pretty thick, they're talking to me. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. And that's what we've decided to do. And, and, and I want to advise to, you know, my little sisters and my nieces is that that's how you disempower. So when you disempower somebody is when you, you're taking your power back yeah. from them. Mm. So the name that they choose to call you, you can take that name and make it into... I want to say a positive, right? Yeah, definitely. So, like you said, pretty and thick were Two never things. really associated yeah. with each other. You know, you were either pretty or you or were you thick. thick. Yeah. So now, you know, we have, you know, people like those ladies by the Stula Chronicles, you know, and they're doing the most right now. You know, they're embracing the beautiful, beautiful bodies. And so take that name that they're calling you. And if it's not your name, don't answer to it. Don't answer to it. But take that name and find a way to, to put a positive spin on it. Because you are beautiful. You are created that way yeah. for a specific reason. So don't answer to names that are not yours. Don't. Yeah. Mm -mm. Simple. Mm -mm. <laughs> Number six. How did you get into plus size modeling? And how does one get into it? So, you know, I think... There's all sorts of ways to do things. And I think one thing that I want to I want to say this and I'm saying this as a plus size woman. So I already know that, you know, it's difficult because modeling has always been for people who look a certain way, yeah. who weigh a certain weight. True. Um, but obviously now with the market opening up and the industries opening up a whole lot more, you 
there are different types of modeling, right? So when you're modeling for retail brands like Donna, mm. um, you know, Donna has all shapes and sizes of just plus size, which is stunning, right? Yes. So to get into it, I think you need to know first, understand, you, you know what? Research is everything. For mm -hmm. me, you know, I looked at um, plus size models and I was looking at the different types of modeling. You could be a plus size model on the runway. You mm. could be a plus size model catalog. You can be yeah. a plus size model doing commercials. So there's different types of modeling. So do your research, find out what kind of modeling that you can do. And, you know, what will guide you is your shape right mm -hmm. and this is a fact like i know that all bodies are beautiful but i know as me that if i want to be a runway model i do know that i i will need to work on something so that yeah. i can walk comfortably on the runway and things like that and everybody can do it okay yeah. i don't want anybody to think that you can't do it because of a certain thing but you know so find an agent also that helps a lot and with the agencies once you know once they they talk to you or they sign you up they can help you throughout the whole process they explain to you exactly what i just said in terms of different types of modeling what you need to do what you need to work on because at the end of the day this is it's it's an industry right it's just like work you know you're true. not going to show up to work in short shorts right yeah that is true so there's just certain ways to do certain things so do your research and then um find an agent i think i was just so so blessed mm. for things to work out the way they did um it was about two years ago while i was still traveling and i and my host mom for where i was staying she said to me you should try modeling and i i was like what, what? me, mm -hmm. me. Like this. nobody has ever said that yeah. nobody has ever said that to me and even though people in my circle would tell me that i'm beautiful but nobody had ever told me that and I looked up some agencies and I got signed to an agent um, in Canada called Numa Models. And it, you know, it was mind blowing for me to think that I was beautiful yeah. in that way. And it grew from there. And I came home and before I knew it, I was signed with Boss Models. And it's been an amazing journey. And like I said, you know, they hold your hand and they help you and they groom you and yeah. they teach you. And, the, you know, they open your eyes so, so much to your beauty. And, and because, you know, I think petite people have had, you know, oh, I don't want to say an advantage, but, you know, <laughs> they've been in the industry for so yeah, long. Much longer, yeah. And, you know, they've learned from a younger age and whatever. And yeah. so a lot of plus size models, obviously now it'll be different because my nieces are going to be plus size models, yeah, you know, know, by the time they're 18. It's going to become easier. Whereas we are like only starting now in our late 20s yes <laughs> late 20s and um you know but because there's so much to learn model yeah. etiquette and all those kind of things so there's all things to learn do your research find an agent and they'll help you throughout the journey but you have to believe in yourself you have to have to have to believe in yourself that confidence is, is everything when you walk into a room and you're timid you're not going to be impressing anybody yeah. um, you have to walk in and own it and I think that's a very, very valid point. I mean, you are your biggest supporter yes. and also your biggest critique. Exactly. So whichever one you choose, whether you believe you are or you're not, then you are that. Exactly. And, you know, you what you present to people is what they will, wha what they will take. That is so true. So if you're presenting a timid person, somebody who that's cannot just, look people in the eye, yeah. who cannot hold her head up high chest out because your chest is always out it, yeah. okay we <laughs> yeah. live with chest out so but <laughs> if you're not going to embrace that you're not going to be able to present that and people are not going to be ex able to accept it but i think the biggest thing you know when we talk about people accepting it you accept yourself first it's always important and here's the part. thing you are not teaching people to accept you or yeah. you are not able to teach people to accept you but you are able to teach people to accept that you accept you yeah so if you don't accept you you can't expect people to understand yeah you and your journey and what you're trying to push mm -hmm. so you believe in you have self-confidence chin up chest out you know and just put on a pair of heels look good just you know and enter them Born. Really. and I, I heard something very interesting I think uh, a week ago uh, it's one of these TED talks mm -hmm. and uh, this lady in particular that was speaking was saying you fake it till you become it yeah. 
You know, mm-hmm. like until you actually become that thing, you need to live exactly. like you're already a supermodel. You exactly. need to carry yourself as a supermodel exactly. already before yes. you even become it. Yes. And that's the only way you get there. And we've come such a long way just as a people and even just as a market. Because before, for me, I always used to wear baggy clothes, creepy yeah. clothes, clothes that would cover my body, would mm. hide my shape. Um, but we've come a long way where there are now beautiful clothes trendy clothes for the sure, plus size yeah. and so you're not feeling left out or you're not feeling as if you know you just wearing granny clothes the whole time <laughs> yeah so you put on those clothes that's why i said you put on heels a lot of people thinking big girls come don't wear heels ah, i'm mm. telling you i'm telling you yeah so put on the pair of heels and walk and walk, walk the talk, no uh, and walk you have to walk and yeah. you have to walk with confidence mm. enter a room and take over yeah take over really that's all you need to do cool yeah awesome the next question what is the one thing that your mama taught you and that you will teach your own children so you know my mom is i want to say you know she's the advocate for fighting for your mental health yeah um i lost my dad when i was very young i think i was like four sure. and she fought through probably one of the most severe depressions mm. in the history of you know our Ever. family's depression mm. and nobody thought that she would survive but she fought so much and you know that's one thing that i would take down for my children to fight so so much for your yeah. mental health because you know i saw this quote that um we need to you know you can't teach your kids to be okay with them and before you become okay with you yeah. so you know she eventually realized or you know in her healing process remembered that you know if i'm going to be a broken woman i'm going to be raising a broken woman mm. so that is what i will teach my kids is to fight for your mental health um and and as you growing remember that you your your mental state is preparation for the next generation. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That is very very deep because I feel like it takes a whole lot of energy mm. to take yourself out of that deep dark place. Yeah. I mean that is and it's by a deep, far a dark strength place. of uh, uh, that's a strength yeah. on its own I on can't its even. Own. Yeah. Yeah, so that is that is a great lesson yeah. I think to pass yeah. down so I think it's intense because we like I said we need to remember that we are doing things for the next generation it's not just about us you know this podcast by mm. kids are going to listen to it yeah and they're going to be able to share it with not only just their friends but their children yeah and they're going to know that you know you need to be a strong woman in order to prepare yourself for the next generation true of strong women sure yeah and then on that tip now, but what is that one thing that your mama taught you that you will not carry it down to your kids? Sure, my <laughs> lovely mother. Um, I would love for my kids to find their own path very early. Mm. And, you know, a lot of it, you know, my mother, most of the things that my mother taught me, I will take down with me. You know, because they've shaped me. Yeah. Um, so I cannot discredit her in any way for anything that she has done. But I think it's so important to, to let kids find their path um, at a very, very early stage. Because it prevents for them to sort of um, delay the process in finding themselves and yeah. coming into themselves. And so once, you know, I feel like my kid has an understanding of life which is actually very early you know people don't realize that then i would like for them to start sort of shaping themselves taking shape because then it will be easier for me to let go because i would have prepared them a long time because like i said you know i'm a very late bloomer so my mom is only learning to let go now you know um and so yeah i want my kids to be able to find their path very very early in life and talking about uh, knowing at a very young age what you want to do, um, there's a book that I read, The Alchemist, mm-hmm. and it just simply says, like, from a young age, you really do know what you want. You do. You know, and then, because now of maybe the parents or the family as a whole exactly. and society, you end up just, you know, delving into another yes. path and you end up just losing yourself yes. in it all. So I yeah. guess honesty. Yeah. And, learn, the, yeah. and the journey to find 
yourself the journey back is 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 so yeah. much longer and so much harder. harder true so you're better off just kind of embracing you and 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 learning from a you know at a young stage rather and that's why this is so important for me and and you know we're gonna get to we're gonna get to dive into a lot of things with the podcast yeah. because i want to also not just a community of young women but young girls you know i'm gonna have girls in here and we're gonna talk to each other and you know make sure that parents also understand how to let their kids find their path yeah yeah and i think the one thing that you know we just need to just get rid of is this fear yes you know i think that's the only thing that's yeah. really standing in the way True of story just yeah. becoming yeah so no fear yeah no fear. fear all right uh next question what is it that you find meaningful in life and are you pursuing it living your truth mm. spiritually mentally physically in all aspects of your life from jobs to relationships to church to friendships it is so so important to live your truth because when you you know when you're not real you you can't grow you know because if if you are just in an environment of fakeness you you're not going to be able to grow because you're growing fakeness and when it's time to get real to undo that like i said is such such a long journey and it's a painful journey because you are now having to undo years of fake friendships years of fake relationships years of not understanding yourself spiritually years of just mental health that is just almost backwards because of living fake so i find it so meaningful to live my truth and i've had the best last i want to say three years mm -hmm. because of just just being you know and people are able to embrace you because of how real you are you know i realized that people before perhaps were not embracing me because they could see that i was not happy because i was not truthful because i was not being me you're being fake yeah i was being fake yeah so they couldn't embrace that you know mostly because maybe they recognized that i was doing fake mm. i was being fake so live your truth living your truth is, is is so important and then you surround yourself with realness yeah. real people you know real real life you know no to people pleasing you're not going to be able to please you can't even please your parents how are you going to please strangers yeah. so you cannot please people you make sure that you do you are okay with your god and you're okay with you and you keep it moving that's deep like <laughs> i felt that <laughs> sure wow and then your biggest lesson in life the biggest lesson the biggest lesson that i have learned in life is that the tough times that we experience are not all about us mm -hmm. but are also for helping others by sharing these testimonies and you know and that's what this is about i, I think the most amazing opportunity with this platform and this podcast and that i'm so so grateful for is to be able to to create a space where we're sharing testimonies um and i'm not getting churchy so i don't <laughs> want people to, to get all nervous yeah. no i'm talking about just real life you know um you must remember that every single you know and i said this in one of my clips and i said every single step in the journey has led you to this one moment mm. and so the biggest lesson that i've learned is that everything that i've went through was for this moment so that i can be here to create this platform for people who are currently going through something mm. like that but i can tell them that don't worry i'm here i'm here i'm alive i did not kill myself i did not yeah. you know i didn't jump i didn't drink the pills i didn't do anything yeah. i'm here and you also are gonna make it through so that's the biggest life lesson is that not everything and i'm saying this to even my younger sisters now and my young women out there is that everything that you are going through right now is is, is for the next woman it's mm. preparation for the next woman so that tomorrow if you meet a stranger in the mall who's crying you can say something to her that's going to get her out of that so that the the experiences that we go through are not just about us that's the sure. biggest life lesson. Yeah, and um, you know what they say? 
uh, no lesson ever goes wasted. Exactly. Nothing you go through is ever wasted. Is ever wasted. Yeah. So it's not all to break you. It's not all to, to you know, to 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 hurt you and to destroy you. But, but only to actually build you and make you stronger. To actually build you. Like I said, everything is for the next generation. Yeah. So I have younger sisters listening to this. You have younger sisters listening to this, and. And they also need to see that, okay, someone has been through this and they've made it. Because for me, when I was 9, 10, it was bleak for me. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if there was anybody out there who was feeling the way I was feeling. Mm. You know, what does it mean to be this big at this age? Yeah. Um, what does it mean to be, you know, with no friends at this age? But... But now I realize that all of that was for this moment and, and I realize and I want everybody to be here and be part of this journey. And I'm so so grateful that, you know, I get to to create this kind of a platform. Getting me all teary now. I know. <laughs> Getting me all teary. But uh, thank you so much for answering all these questions. And I think everybody who's listening, it's quite beneficial. And thank you so much for sharing a piece of yourself. Amazing. Thank you. So I really appreciate you <laughs> for, for, for that. So that brings us to the end of it. That was just the 10 questions. I'm happy to answer more. We can do a, another episode later on in the series. Um, with more questions if you have so if you do have any more questions please comment down below send me a message on my social media all the links are in the description and um, yeah send through also topics that you would like for me to cover or what else you would like for me to talk about and you know even celebrity ideas maybe I can find a contact somebody who can phone them and then can have them in the studio it's gonna be amazing so catch the next episode where we will be unpacking what it what exactly it means to be plus size so i will have um beautiful amazing people in here and we're gonna just be chatting about that so keep it locked keep it tuned thank you so so much for listening remember the problem is not with you or how you look it's what you think of yourself and self-love will always be the greatest revolution <laughs>